Hi guys, um, welcome to this painting tutorial for Death Company from the Blood Angels. Hopefully you're enjoying uh, the Seven Days of Sanguinous, um, because we have lost an awful lot of sleep. Um, and I, uh, I certainly have trying to figure out our paint schemes. Anyway, what we're going to be doing here obviously is painting the Death Company Marine with a jump pack. Um, now if you look under close, you can see what we're basically trying to, uh, to get at here. You know, this is basically the sort of idea you would see in uh, the White Dwarf, where the black armour is done just very simply, just has a little bit of grey highlighting and whatnot to it. We think it makes it look very sharp and very clean. Um, so we're going to show you how to do that, and show you that it's not as hard as you think, and if you make mistakes, it's very easy to correct. Um, we also have some washes that we're going to be doing. Uh, no, uh, no dry brushing in this one. Um, but we are going to be working a lot on trying to get pick out highlights and pick out a little bit of shading here and there uh, through other little like hard line highlighting techniques, that sort of stuff. Um, but what you end up with is a very effective, very simple model to paint. Um, I think this chap under cam here took about 45 minutes or so, but that was me hammering on at it. So obviously this video is going to be a bit longer. Um, so please don't fall asleep too too quickly. Uh, so, base thing first, the black. So what do we use for the black? Well, there's many, many different primer sprays out there. Uh, I use Halfords most of the time because it's it's easy for me to get to. It's five minutes up the road and it's an effective primer. It's designed for car body work. So. Um, but what we used in this case was Army Painter's uh, color primer. Now, this is the color pl primer in black. Um, it comes in a 400 milliliter can and is actually very effective. Now, I was very concerned when I was using this the first time because following the instructions it says to spray from about 20 centimeters away so on. Um, if you're used to using other primers you're spraying from about a foot away or so just to sort of dust the primer on. You can't do that with this because it'll dry within that distance. Uh, it'll travel about five inches and be pretty much completely dry by the time it hits the model. Um, so what you have to do, and what scares the living daylights out of me when doing it, is spraying from about three to four to four inches away and going <clears throat> with it and going really quite hard at it. And what it can initially look like is, uh-oh, I've just put this in a microwave because all the details are gone. Um, if you don't go too hard on it, that's not going to be the case when it dries because there's a lot of pigment in this, but there's also a lot of propellant uh, the actual air propellant for it. So it's a very heavy pigmented paint um, with a lot of propellant in the can. And that propellant, once you've sprayed it on, give it about 20 minutes. That propellant will evaporate out, all the paint will sit down, and you get uh, this effect, which is incredibly smooth and incredibly matte, um, which is exactly what we're looking for. Um, the one that we're going to be painting in the tutorial has a little bit of a sheen off of it, but uh, what we do with that is we're going to be treating that with some washes. Uh, in some of the later stages, um, just to tone it all down and get us that matte finish that we have on our painted one. So the the, the army painter one was very handy. Um, we sprayed all our death company. Um, we sprayed a couple of vehicles with it as well, and our sanguinary guard. And the one can. This is still the same can, and it's still about half full. Um, you're going to get about. Once you've got some experience with it, you're going to get maybe 80 to 90 models. Pushing it, you're going to get about 100 models out of the one can. Um, but you may be going a little bit too sparingly with it in some cases. But very good stuff. Because it's got such a high pigment, you're going to have a very solid finish to it. A very uniform finish to it, which is very good. So, we shall take our painted model off. <coughs> Excuse me. Use him as my guide and clip on the guy that we're going to be doing for this. So this is the Death Company Marine with a hand flamer. Um, why I picked him, I have no idea. I think he just looks cool. Now, the first thing we're going to be doing here is trying to add all our red details. So we're going to be doing the cross on the shoulder, and uh, basically anywhere else we think there's going to be red, so there's going to be uh, red on the chain sword, and we'll probably do some red uh, along the hand flamer as well. So what we'll do now is First thing we're going to be using is mechanorite red, which is hard to to see because there's a big splodge of paint over the name. 
um, as you can see, we've been using it quite extensively. So for this step, I'm going to be using, well, I'm using Army Painter brushes for this step, uh, for the entire painting tutorial. And in this, I'm actually going to be using the Hobby Highlighting one because it has quite a nice flat uh, uniform bristles to it. And we'll be able to get that down in possibly just one or two little brush strokes. So just for the start, so just dip that into the water, charge it with some water. Um, we would be covering a wet palette in this, but we, th we figured because this is more getting something done fast and effective, we're not looking for a competition winning miniature here. Um, so we're just going to be working straight out of the tubs. If we come to do something that we think we should be doing for a competition, uh, for a competition winning entry or something like that, we would be using the wet palette and we'd be using a lot more advanced techniques for it. So here we go with the first bit of red onto our shoulder. So what we want to try and do is aim to stay within the recesses of the shoulder plate. But even if we don't, there are subsequent steps that will help us cover that up uh, later on throughout the tutorial. So just work it down in. So at this stage, some of it may look a little mucky like I'm touching bits of the model I don't want to be touching with uh, the red paint but it's not terribly that big a deal as this is only our first step there's plenty of steps <clears throat> plenty of subsequent steps to help tidy this whole effect up what's nice about using the foundation paints is because they have such a high pigment content you are generally going to find that maybe one to two coats will give you the, the solid colour that you're after. Sorry, I must keep this in focus. I must keep remembering I'm painting under camera and I'm not painting at home. So guys, bear in mind, there are other reds you can use. You can Obviously you can use red gore or blood red, uh, considering they are blood angels. But if you can work with a foundation paint, you're going to find yourself getting stuff done quicker. And the effect is going to be a lot more uniform uh, than if you were painting blood red straight onto black. Now I know a lot of the more professional guys out there would balk at uh, such a a terrible thing but we all know that we do try it at some point where we just go yeah let's just <clears throat> stick red down over or or yellow or or even white just down over a black base coat we probably shouldn't do that so that's the chain sword done I think we're gonna add just a little bit to the hand flamer here as well and we're just gonna try and do this sort of shroud sort of pieces just over the top of it and after all these guys are death company there's gonna have to be a lot of red in here to actually break up the majority black of the color scheme and we'll try and avoid those higher details we'll probably paint those uh, in a more silver color when we get to those So I can now work my way over the top of this model then. Again, I'll probably avoid this central ridge in the middle of the hand flamer. And probably just coat it in a metallic paint when we get there. So I just bring the model around a little bit just to help you guys see what's going on. Don't worry too much about painting over areas that you're not, you weren't intending to paint that particular color. 
So that's basically our Death Company Marine with all his red down. Now we're going to wash the brush off. We're done with our Mechanorite Red, I think possibly for good or just for the meantime. Haven't quite decided yet. I'll wipe my paintbrush off and let's have a look at what we can do next. Now we have armor joints. Now we've got joints behind the knees. We've got joints like for example here in the inside of the elbow. So what we're going to do with those is we're going to take some Codex Grey, our GW Codex Grey. Just add some water to that. And we're going to paint all those armor joints with a tiny smidgen, if you will, of the Codex Grey. Still using the Hobby Highlighting Brush. This may be a little bit too big for this technique, but... So right down into inside of this elbow. Because what we're aiming for is a relatively solid color. Now again, we could be using a foundation paint for this. We could be using Adeptus Battle Grey, um, which is a little bit darker. Um, but we do want the details to sort of pop more than just to, to fade into the background. Okay, and then there's another little spot, a couple little spots along the back of the hips. We need to make sure we hit. Okay, so that pretty much covers uh, the Codex Grey coat, um, just in the armor joints and whatnot. I'm trying to keep them in focus for you guys. So. There we are. So you can sort of see the the shape that he's taking just a little bit now. So with the Codex Grey done for now, the next time we touch that we're actually going to be needing it to uh, do our hard edge highlighting. Um, but we'll, le we'll try to leave that for as long as possible basically. Now, what should we go next? I think, the mink, I suppose, we should probably do some gold. Um, and what we're going to be doing with that is, as the first coat, we have Shining Gold. And once again, just a little bit of water into the cap. In fact, we'll probably choose a smaller brush this time. Um, a Wargamer Detail Brush. So, just a little bit of water into that. Into the tub of paint. And we're probably just going to go across all these uh, chest details and anywhere else we think we should probably get a little bit of gold down. So on this blood drop and wings here on the front now again there's more specific techniques to doing a good gold effect but with the aim of this model being something that we want to do relatively fast we are just covering more or less flat colors so there's going to be a lot of people disappointed with this because we're not doing NMMs or non-metallic metal if anyone hasn't heard that term before. Basically because I don't want my eyes to bleed. Sort of chalice and crossbones detail on this chest. And trying to keep it all in focus for you.
try and avoid painting it into the eye sockets. Um, it makes it stand out, it makes it more obvious that it is actually a skull. What we're basically trying to do is, we all know that the Death Company are a majority black. Um, we're trying to break that up as much as we can with little details that you can look into and go, cool, that's a different colour. Um, but from a distance that they're going to be obvious to what they, they actually are, what the unit actually is. But I find when you take the majority colour of something, they can look really bland, but the more detail little bits and pieces that you can add to give the, char the, the model more character, uh, generally the better the model actually turns out. So we're also, as a couple of our last little details here, I'm going to add uh, the, the uh, shining gold that we're using to the muzzle of the hand flamer. Um, and we're going to be able to dull that down eventually with some washes to make it look a bit more charred. So the way to do that is just run the brush sideways along it. Um, and try and make sure we're not getting <coughs> we're not getting paint into the holes in the muzzle. I suppose is that actually not? I'm trying to think. Is it actually called a shroud more than a muzzle? I think it's called shroud, something like that. Again, avoid the eye holes if possible. Like I just didn't do. So that's the gold details down. Uh, what should we do next? Well, we should have our Codex Grey nearly dry by now. We're going to wash our brush off and we're going to add the Bada Black Wash to that. Um, so I'll just wash the brush off, get my Bada Black Wash. Of course, I'm going to show you the tub. Everyone knows what this is. This is one of the most, one of the most used uh, washes there is, there is bleh, next to uh, Devlin Mud, which a lot of people comment and 40k Radio definitely approve that that stuff should come in the 50 gallon drum and I certainly do not complain with that so yes anyway black washes into these armor joints then so we want to just take a liberal dose of bad up black and just dab it into those joints and when that seeps down we should still see the detail of the joints So don't worry about the wash spilling over the black armor, even if that does make a different effect, um, we have ways and means of actually changing that later. So. so what should be our next step? Well what we're going to do is let it sit for a minute or two, um, we're going to make sure that the wash has settled, uh, once the wash is settled what we're then going to do is go along and actually highlight the gold details with burnished gold and then we'll just continue on and do some more metallic work after that. So you can now see that the Bada Black Wash has started to settle down a little bit. Um, what I want to do now, uh, there's a couple of steps I want to do now actually. I'm going to take, uh, let me see, we're going to highlight the, the brass, the gold details a little bit. Uh, once we do that, we're then going to take uh, some attention to the purity sails and a little bit of script work that should be on the, the chest plate. So what we're going to do first is highlight the brass, now, or highlight the gold. And we're going to be using burnished gold to highlight. And again, we're going to need a relatively small brush, so we're going to be using uh, Wargamer Detail. So add some water to the brush and just take a little bit out from the burnished gold. Uh, take away some excess on the lid. Now what we're going to be trying to do is basically
touch the very highest points so on the chest plate we have just the edges of those little bones that we painted just the very ends of those just to basically add a little bit of a shine to them run a line of burnished gold along the very top of the wing and follow that down to the blood drop and then also the tips of the wings So just there, if we move around the model, we'll do the same thing on this one on the arm, or on the hand, sorry, and the hilt of the sword. So again, just the large flat area of the forehead on the skull. And along the hilt of the sword, we're going to try just along the very top edge. So just a line. more or less a splodge and also that ring around the hilt and around the other side in the same place just run it down over the f top half of the first row of holes and that should do the trick nicely So now the gold details will stand out a little bit more. We're going to wash our brush off. We're now finished with the burnished gold for now. We might be finished with it for the whole model actually. Now we're going to do the purity sails and the script work. And on that we're going to take a base coat of Deneb stone. And the Deneb stone will basically be a nice base colour uh, for adding our bleached bone on top of. So again we'll just take We'll just keep using the detail brush because we have that small script work on the chest plate that we're going to do. And more or less using the side of the brush. Trying not to get too close to the chalice. And basically just work in the script. Like so. That may be a little bit too much paint there. But again, that will be easily rectified in a later, sta uh, later step. Just a bunch of horizontal lines. run paint down and there's a touch well we don't have to worry about that either just basically to bulk out what we have there now we can leave that the way it is and we possibly will but I prefer the the richer color of bleach bone on top of that so with that done wash our brush off we're now going to take some chaos black and what we're going to do with that is we're going to tidy up uh, some of the areas just to see what the, the model looks like at this, at this stage. Um, there will be another time for that uh, later on in the paint. Um, so we're going to leave this stuff to dry for a couple of minutes. When that's dry we'll bring our chaos black in and we'll start to tidy up the areas in preparation for doing our first highlight on the armour. So now then at this stage we're going to take our chaos black and like I said, we're going to just tidy up uh, a lot of our details. So in this po at this point, we're going to use a precise detail brush. We're going to take some black, charge our brush with a bit of black. And now we're basically going to touch up the areas that we've put paint we don't want. So for instance, at the top of the vent, or at the bottom of this vent, gone. Along here, we want to tidy up the, the rim around the shoulder pad. Like 
So, and for any paint, any uh, red paint that got in to the recesses on the shoulder shoulder pad, we're also going to use this to fill those in now. So in here as well, in around this script work, we want to bring that down to a very nice fine line. That's pretty much spot on. We also have a lump of Codex Grey that is just on the belt, just above one of the leg joints. So that should pretty much be it. I don't see anywhere else we really need it. Well, we can tidy up the end of the, the hand flamer here and just run black across that flat face. So at this stage he's looking pretty good, pretty mean. I'm trying to get him all back into focus for you. So he's not looking too bad at the minute. Just wash the brush down. We've had enough of the chaos black for the meantime. Put that away. We're going to do some more metallic work. So we need to get our bolt gun metal. RGW bolt gun metal and we're going to go across the blades uh, the teeth of the chain sword and probably also paint in around the hand flamer as well and we basically want to just paint the entire the entirety of the teeth of the chain sword because there will be a highlighting step for this afterwards and we can leave a little bit of the black just to show a bit of a shadow So nice and simple. We're not trying to complicate things too much, hopefully. And around the back. As there will be subsequent steps to highlight this. And same on the pilot light. You could probably also get away with doing some on the connecting pipes. On this side. There as well, just even that out. We're also going to run across the the two cables that go either side of the head, go along the the cheek or the jawline. You want to get as much coverage with that as you can because again we will be highlighting that, and we don't want too little bolt gun metal on that part as for the highlight to just completely saturate the base colour that's fine to me So that'll be enough uh, bolt gun metal. We'll clean the brush up.
And I'm now going to bring in my bleach bone. And what we're going to do with that is go over the script work again. And we're going to use a finer detail brush than that. In fact, we're going to use our insane detail brush. Which actually says insane detail on it, which is funny. Take the side of the brush. If you're not confident enough to do the very fine edges, you don't have to. Then Ebstone will look absolutely fine once we've come to finish the model anyway. Like so. So that ought to do that. That's now ready for script work and whatnot to be actually put on. Again, I'm going to wash my brush off. Now we're going to start to highlight the metal that we've just put down. And for that, we're going to be using chain mail. And again, we're going to just keep using our insane detail brush because we want the highlights relatively fine. So on the piping on the face, take a little line of chain mail and just run it to the very outside edge. Now it's not going to be too visible, uh, especially when you're looking at it under camera like this, but it will make the model pop once we start to do our final effects. bit of the skull, pretty much the whole skull that's there. And the same on the bottom ridge. And one running down either side. And across the top. So nothing too fanciful. Uh, just enough to actually get the highlight that we're looking for. So back to the chain sword. And at this point we want to run a very slight highlight line just along the teeth we don't need a lot of paint for that um, just add some more anyway and we just highlight those teeth we don't need to worry about the ones uh, on the underside So at this point, uh, we are really getting there now. Uh, we don't have too many more steps to do. However, before we, s before we move on to what is going to be a complete wash of the entire model, we're going to do some script work onto the bleach bone that we just added. So if I can get my chaos black, pardon me, let's get my chaos black back out with the insane detail brush again. Now, we're going to start with the purity seal on the shoulder. And what we need to do is dab lines, basically. So, basically, something like that. It may be a little bit too sparse looking. But that's the sort of effect that we're looking for. Just something that lets you know that there's actually something on there. And for the chest plate, well, we could be adventurous and write a name, but uh, I'm unfortunately, I'm just going to admit it, I ain't that skilled. So again, we're just going to try and do some text, or just a tiny little script. Just something that represents there being something written. It 
could be the the story of how this particular marine fell to the to the black rage and was became death company. Who knows? You know. And this could be the purity seal showing his uh, his soul is definitely going to the emperor's side when he finally dies. Anyway, enough of the fluff. This is not a fluff video. We're trying to make the guy look cool. So the script, as basic as it is, is done. Um, what we now need to do, or what we are going to do now, is give the entire model a Gryphon Sapia wash. Um, now why are we doing that? That is going to dull down the red, it's going to deepen the red a little bit, um, it's going to age the gold details a little, it's going to age the, the purity seals a little. Um, but why have we not done other steps? Why have we not painted the blood drops yet? Because we want them to be as vibrant as possible. So what we're going to do is take the Gryphon Sapia, And we're going to use, let me see, we're going to use our hobby highlighting brush. And we're just going to charge the brush with the wash. And we're just going to wash basically the entire model, keeping away from the armor joints that we painted grey, because we don't want them to be sullied with a little bit of sepia. So again, just a good liberal coat of the wash. This will really help calm down the slight sheen of the black spray that we used, the Army Painter Black. We also want to avoid the teeth of the chain sword, if possible, and focus on the red. So basically, just coat the whole model. Just get as much wash down on it as you want, because Gryphon Sapia is a rather subtle wash. Um, and we're only really using it to kill Sheen here, so... Okay guys, so that's our Gryphon Sapia wash down. Just clean the brush off. We're now going to let this dry for a period of time. Uh, once that's done, what we'll then be doing is all the brighter details. We'll be doing our hard edge highlighting on the black armour. Um, we'll be doing blood red details on the little bit of uh, rope banding around his arm as well as all the blood drops that will be in a very bright red as well. So when we come back, we'll start into the, the really good stuff. So you can see our sepia wash is all dried. Everything is nice and calm looking. Um, the black doesn't have just as much of a sheen to it as it did. Uh, we can now work on actually adding some highlight to this model. So what we're going to be doing first off is uh, working on the blood red highlights. Um, first we're going to be painting all the blood drops, so we'll get a good, uh, nice bright blood drop paint. Um, and then going to do the, the banding around his arm, his uh, right arm. Then we're going to go in and we're going to highlight the, the chain sword, the red cross on the shoulder and the gun as well. Okay, so again we're going to use the insane detail brush. and. We're using blood red. And we want to make this as precise as possible. We want this model to be done relatively quick. And you can see immediately how much more that stands out amongst the <coughs> the reds that have been done with the covered with the sepia wash that foundation paint so that really does stand out now and makes it a very eye-catching part of the model again as close as we can without blocking your view with my head I know I've got a big ego sometimes but I don't think it's that big and just start coating that so we're trying to be as careful as we can because this is quite a small piece to work on. And if it doesn't turn out that vibrant in the end, we could possibly give it another coat, or we can just quite happily just leave it the way it is. Maybe just add a sepia wash to it to shade it in a little, and that would do it. Now, I'm going to wash my brush and 
while we're working with the blood red, we're going to do another coat on some of those gems uh, as they do dull down once it dries. Because it's on a black uh, backdrop, what we could have done was painted them in skull white first and brought them up from there. That would have been a lot easier. But I think just for the sake of it, I'm just going to show you uh, how to get that vibrant look without having to do too many colour changes. So now what we want to do is start our highlight. So on focusing on the red cross, the gun and the chain sword, we're going to start highlighting these parts with very thin lines of blood red just to pick the edges out. Just several light passes with the brush. And you can see a little bit of a gradient starting to build up. So if I make my paint mix a little thicker, like so, and over the top up here. Now this is something that does take a lot of practice and a relatively steady hand to try and do highlights of this size basically on such a small model. So I think from this corner we'll work one down the way. Like so. So again, just enough to show a changing gradient, uh, just a tiny highlight. I think that would possibly do. We'll maybe run across the top of the cross just a little bit. at the back as this whole area would pick up some light and we want as much definition to the part as possible really again along here and up the side like so. So something that really does just emphasize the shape of what we're trying to highlight, that is the whole idea. And to around the other side. And try and get this all in focus for you. down this edge across the top pretty much exactly like that so I'd be happy enough with that uh, from a distance this d it does pick out the highlights very well and uh, it will add that just that little extra scope of depth and definition uh, with a little bit of hard edge highlighting like that. So that'll do with the blood red. Um, what we are going to do next is the eye lenses. Uh, something that a lot of people struggle with. Uh, Les from Awesome Paint Job has a very good technique of just putting a little bit of green and a white dot in the black area to show reflective a reflective glass effect. We're going to try and do something a little bit more simple. Something that doesn't require a heck of a lot of practice and a heck of a lot of patience. So we're going to take some skull, sorry, skull white, put a little bit, still on our insane detail brush, 
make sure you've taken as much of the red paint off this brush as possible before you start this step because then we'll have pink eyes and pink eye is not a pleasant thing so I've been told. So we'll take a little bit of white put it in just to below the cap okay and then what we're going to do is try and add a rough shape of the lens into the helmet just into the eyepiece okay so that's relatively even it's a little bit big on one side he looks a bit confused um, so if we try I'm gonna try and even this up just out of shot because I need to have the model completely facing me at this point Eesh, a little bit more even but that's okay because we still have plenty of tidy up steps that we can do after that now what do we want to do next well I think we are ready to start some of our proper armor highlights. Now what we're going to be using for this is the Codex Grey that we used um, to do the, the armor joints. So we have our Codex Grey, uh, Grey again. We're going to thin down some in the cap. Still utilizing the Insane Detail brush. So using hard edge highlighting what we're really looking for is literally the hard edges. So you're seeing where the light is hitting the, the edges of these uh, vents. Well, that's where we're going to start. And we're going to start with a little thin gray line. Like so. And then basically work around areas we think the light would catch. And only do maybe the outside edges along panel lines and whatnot. Let's have a go around the bottom of this leg. So just say about there. Just a little line like so. Nothing too fancy by the way, don't worry about going over the top. Um, you'll see for yourself once you start to add these highlights, you'll see where uh, the, the best places would be to place them. So again, we'll probably just go along here. We work away down the outside edge a little bit. Then it's a pretty easy step to tidy up afterwards. And all I'm going to do is pick out the very corners the very front corners of the helmet as to not define it too much. Again we can run over with that with some chaos black just to tidy that up. Anywhere you feel confident the light would definitely be hitting on the model so raised edges and whatnot are what you're aiming for. So we go around to the front of the model we have some nice uh, join lines and panel lines and knee pads and stuff to do. So in this one that's sort of obscured by the chain sword, try and tidy that up a little bit. And get a nice thin line going from the top of the knee pad out. So say along the chain sword, just pick out there. I'll we'll pick out the top edge. A 
just like that. Again, over the bit of the wrist. Maybe just carry that line down a little bit more. But yeah, basically anywhere you're going to find light naturally hitting the model. And that's where you're going to want to aim for. Um, at this stage, we'll now wash the brush. And we're going to go back over our areas of highlighting with Chaos Black. And what we're going to do now is tidy the, the lines up. Because some of them are a little thick. Uh, we don't want them in some areas to be very thick, we want them to be very slight. So we'll, now this time we'll just take our Wargamer Detail Brush, this one, which is quite a, a, a fine nib on it. If I bring my model back into focus, we're going to start tidying up all these highlighted areas. So along this knee pad, this is a, a classic example of putting it down too thick. We want to get to the very edge of the highlight line and just thin it down. And then just spread the chaos black out over the knee pad. So that's a nice thinner uh, highlight line. Probably do the same thing on this one. And then I'm going to cut the highlight line a little bit. Like I said, just to define the very corners of the helmet there. And also this one has got a little bit wiggly. So I'll just bring it down to where it's straight again. Like so. Now again, you can take quite a length of time at this, but if you're happy enough with what you've done, leave it be. If you're not happy with what you've done, then there's definitely time for you to improve that. And it is all a question of practice, so... As the more you practice a technique, the better you'll become at it, and the more people will actually recognize the, the amount of effort that you've put into any single model. You want really the, the lines to be quite sharp. Um, the sharper that those lines are, the more definition the part gets. And the tidier it gets, the more shiny, the more clean it looks. So with that step done, um, we're going to do our, our complete our eye lenses. So what's going to be put into this is a Thoraca Green wash. Just as simple as that. So this is what I'm saying is that you don't need to be too precise with the white. The Thoraca Green will pull to the edges, hopefully, and should hide a lot of the, the overdone areas. So we don't want to put too much wash on the brush. So here we go. We can add more than that. Hopefully that should define the edges a little bit as that dries. His eye might be a little bit dark, but that's no big deal. So same again on this eye. I'll try and keep my head out of shot. And that's pretty much exactly what we're looking for. Is just to get the green in there with the white below it and when that dries that should shade up quite nicely. So what I'm going to do while that's drying is go have a cup of coffee. No, uh, we need some more blood red because we have a purity seal that I absolutely forgot about. 
So I will tidy that up and do that now quickly. Because guys, you've pointed it out before when I leave something out. So I do appreciate it. I don't sit and curse your names uh, all the time. But, you know. So we'll just paint in that purity seal. Like so. I've also noticed we got a bit of grey on that blood drop. So that should be fine. Once that's dried we can then give that a sepia wash as well and tie it all in rather nicely. So we'll now leave this for a few moments. Uh, when we come back, the eyes should be dry, uh, the purity seal should be dry, we can put our final Gryphon Sapia wash down, and boom, we're done. So the purity seal is now dry, and the eye lenses have also settled down. Uh, they've settled down rather well, there's a tiny little line just above there. So what I'm going to do now is actually take a bit of Chaos Black once again and we're just going to tidy that up really quick and just run a little bit of black just along there just to help tidy that up a little bit makes the, the detail look a little bit sharper and I'll probably do the same on the other side there as there seems to be a little bit there as well And I may also add a little bit of highlight to that. So, we have a little bit of sepia to do. And by the time we've done that sepia, the black on that helmet will have dried. And then I'm going to add another couple of Codex Grey highlights just above the eye lenses. So just, just that basically, um, just a, a blob in that beardy seal that settle down rather nice. And we can be, we can afford to be a little bit more indiscriminate with it on this part of the arm. Just like that. And around the other one. Like so. So you can see what a difference that makes in defining the actual details on the helmet and what definition we have on details throughout the model. So guys, that's it. Um, hopefully it may have taken a little longer than anticipated, <laughs> to say the least, but hopefully you've enjoyed watching it. Hopefully you've seen a few techniques that you haven't tried before, maybe you were too worried about trying it in case you mucked up the model. But there really in in reality there is very few techniques that you can mess up that are irre like you can't re uh, repair basically. Um, especially when you're working on a black model and you get that highlight wrong. Some black paint, thin it down so it doesn't look like it's standing out amongst the, the spray black you've put down, you're fine. Um, Hopefully you've enjoyed watching it. Thanks very much for watching. Um, hopefully you're enjoying uh, our seven days of sanguinis. Uh, put your comments below, guys. I'd like to hear what you think on this. Um, so thanks very much. I'll see you in the next one.